Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Natalie here. In today's video, I am filming something that is very different than the other content that I have filmed before and it is a video all about consulting. When I say consulting, I mean like working for a large consulting company like Accenture, Deloitte, PwC, stuff like that. I actually got a job with Accenture right after college and so many of you guys are going into that same type of field. You guys want to work for Deloitte, Accenture, PwC, EY, all of those really big consulting companies and I thought that it would be a good idea to sit down and film a video answering your questions all about that to help you guys out and not only that but asking my friends too because I was only there for nine months before I quit so anyways I thought it would be a good idea to bring on my friends that work at consulting companies and get their advice too so they were so nice and they actually filmed they sit, sat down on their own time filmed sent me the video clip so I'm gonna be editing those into this video so I think that it was a great idea to kind of bring in a bunch of different people to have different experiences we all were in different locations so I I think it's a really cool way to get a bunch of different perspectives and if you guys want me to do one of these on another industry let me know I obviously don't have personal insight on another industry but I could find other people and then put the video together and upload it to my channel oh, I'm Tochi I'm one of Natalie's friends from NC State I studied industrial engineering with her I have about a year's worth of experience in consulting working for a pretty big consulting firm like definitely if you are in the consulting world you know what their name is um, it's a company called Deloitte. I worked for Deloitte for about a year and that's where I get most of my context and some of my answers for and my answers are going to vary from a lot of other people but hopefully this is going to be helpful for you guys. Hey guys, I'm Anna. I'm a technology analyst for Accenture. Um, I got this job a year after I graduated from NC State um, with the help of Natalie, who actually gave me an employee referral, so shout out to that. Hey, my name is John Walker, and I work at a big four accounting firm in their advisory practice. That's the consulting side of these firms, and I specialize in mergers and acquisitions. About to head into the office and uh, answer the rest of your questions. So the first question is, what is consulting? I'm gonna do my best to explain it, and basically what consulting is, is a very large company like Accenture, PwC, EY, Deloitte, whatever, has a bunch of people that they hire and then they actually send them out for other companies' projects. So for example, if a big bank wants to have a project and they don't wanna hire their own employees, they will contract out like Accenture's employees and then Accenture's employees will work on a project for this bank. Consulting is when a company or a person has an issue that they need to solve and they don't know either don't know how to solve it or don't have the time to do so while keeping up with their day-to-day -day activities. So they'll hire a consulting firm which is like going to be a team of professionals or a professional that has expertise in the area that they're having an issue with and that team will come in and help them solve whatever that problem is. Uh, consulting is uh, providing a service in your area of expertise. Um, to a client, whether it's in business, tech, marketing, design, etc. If you were to ask probably 10 different consultants what consulting is or to explain their jobs, you would probably get 10 different answers. But to me, I look at it as if, if you have a certain expertise on a subject matter, right, you're selling that expertise on an hourly basis, essentially. Managers, CEOs of companies, they know their business better than anyone else. Right, they know what their customers are looking for, they know the sentiment in their workplace, they know how the employees are feeling, but they might not know what their competitors are doing or what the next frontier of their industry is. And that's something where a consultant having, you know, the unique kind of opportunity to work with a variety of different businesses, not just one, you learn the best practices across the industry. So you can pick out, okay, this is what you're not doing compared to your competitors, or we know that this piece of technology is going to disrupt your business in five to 10 years. If you're not gonna get you know, ahead of the curve, you might lose in the long run. The next question is, do you need to be technical? No, so it depends because there are a million technical projects out there, but there's also some projects that aren't that technical. I mean, it really just depends on your sector. So I was actually in technology, so you did have to be technical, um, but there's not, there's so many different avenues of consulting. That's kind of the best thing about it. Like you can be a strategy consultant, a business consultant, and you don't really need to be technical. I do feel like having a basic knowledge though of like Excel and just 
learning some basic apps and softwares and being able to pick up technical skills is always a plus because the way things are moving they're just moving towards everything being more technical um so i do think it is a plus but you don't have to be um and anything anything you need to learn you will learn on the job i would say not necessarily it really depends on what area you're in being technical can be helpful if you're working for example i worked in tech consulting so some of the softwares and some of the languages that you're going to be helping these companies implement um, it would help to have a knowledge of the nitty-gritty details of that so that you can talk to the different areas of the business because there's going to be the high level people that don't care if you're technical they just want to know like your strategy into implementing that then there's going to be the people that are actually working on the actual system doing all like the coding and stuff like that and if you can speak their language too that's going to be really helpful for you as a consultant no, you definitely do not need to be technical. Um, I am technical. A lot of people that I work with um, majored in business or design, um, marketing. Um, so consulting is definitely not just for tech people. It depends on the type of consulting that you're doing, but you don't necessarily have to be technical from the jump street, right from the jump. Um, in my work, since it is very technical, right? I am a CPA, I got a master's of accounting, and that technical kind of foundation is required for me, right? Because the insights that, that we provide, kind of like I was saying before, that you're offering an expertise, our expertise is based around our accounting knowledge. Do you need to have a degree? From my understanding, you do. At these companies, they definitely look for people with a degree, I would say. The biggest and most important skill that you're gonna need to have is being a problem solver, first and foremost. If you know how to solve problems, how to help people solve their own problems, that is gonna go so much farther than any sort of degree because there are people that I worked with that were dance majors, there are people that were computer science majors, there are people that studied history, there are people that studied communications, it really is all over the board. So there's no real degree that's gonna help you out. It's more so being able to prove that you know how to solve problems and look at things from a different lens. I, I believe when I was searching for jobs, all um, the consulting jobs required probably at least a bachelor's degree. Sometimes I feel like I maybe saw that an associate's degree was required, but for the most part, I would say a bachelor's degree is required. You you do not need to have a degree to be a consultant in general. Again, because if you go back to that bare bones definition of what consulting is that I said before, that you are offering a skill set that other people may not have, you don't necessarily need to have a degree, right? For what a lot of consultants do though, since it's so competitive at these, to be a management consultant, to, do, to be able to talk to a CEO and CFO and have a conversation, provide them insights, they're gonna wanna see some credibility. And a lot of that does come from having a degree. What did you major in? I majored in industrial engineering at NC State. My personal major was industrial engineering. I studied that back at NC State. Industrial and systems engineering, if you wanna get super technical. So my major was technology, engineering, and design. It sounds like a lot of words. It was basically computer graphics. So I did design, but then I also did a little bit of engineering. I've coded a little bit. I kinda of wish I did more in college, but my major was not 100% tech coding based. It was a lot of design and creative stuff too. I majored in business administration and economics double major. I also got a master's of accounting. What was your interview slash application process like? So for me, I actually went through campus recruiting. So I applied through my NC State like career portal and I actually got an interview after I applied there. I got my first interview and the first interview was just behavioral. So it was just questions like tell me about yourself, Tell me about a time that you had a tr difficult team member, something like that. Like, how would you handle this situation? Going through your resume and talking about your resume. That was the first interview. I had a callback for a second and third interview that would happen on the same exact day. So the second and third interview, the first one was a case study. And if you guys don't know what a case study is, it is where they ask you a situational question. They're not always situational. They just are questions that are meant to make you think and to see the way that you think about things. An example of a case question could be, how many Starbucks are in New York City? That's a case question. And you might think like, Huh? Like, I don't know how many Starbucks there are in New York City. But a good way is so that they just want to know your process. So you can say, okay, well, 
My estimate is that there are 8 million people living in New York City. The amount of people and then New York is this big. You know, they just like want to see your thought process uh, behind it. And that like you don't have to get the answer right. They just want to know how you think about things. If you're just like, I don't know. Or if you don't know how to do like common math, I feel like that doesn't look that good. If you don't know how to like even start thinking about it be like ah, I don't even know where to begin that doesn't look that good so questions like that is an example of a case study but another example could be how do you implement this into a new company so my case study question was actually talking about a company it was a university that had different like schools within the university like the college of education and college of whatever college of this and they each had their own system of classroom like roster teachers professors they each had like their own system where they stored all of that data and they also had things that they are prioritizing in the school like diversity and uh, involvement and all of these like random things that they're prioritizing in the school and they want to implement a new software that has everything at once because some of the colleges overlap with like students can be in both colleges so now like they have like overlapping de data so they want to make like one system for it and how would you go about implementing this system and go probably totally butchered the case study question I took this guys over two years ago now so it's been quite a while because I actually interviewed for Accenture the first month of my senior year so that was August of 2017 or September of 2017 so wow yeah that's crazy so it's been over two years so bear with me I, if I don't get the details right you walk through it with the interviewer and they kind of help you along the way they might be like um well what about this or what if this happens you know so they're giving you pointers along the way but they're not gonna hold your hand through it and they're not gonna guide you through it they really just want to know how you think and how your thought process is even if you don't get to the right answer because there isn't really a true right answer for stuff like that and then once I did the case study question I moved on to another behavior interview where it was with someone else and it was basically the same as the first one except more in detail and then after that about a week later I got a call that I got the job the location of where the job was which was in Charlotte and my salary so that was that call it was such an exciting day I was so happy it was either end of September or beginning of October of my senior year and I already had a job and it was definitely the one that I wanted so I was just over the moon and that is how my process was for the interview um, I applied online through my school's career site and then after that application, they'll invite you back. Once you're invited back, you do one behavioral interview, and that's just getting to know you, seeing if they think you'd be a good fit culturally. And then the next round of interviews is going to be a case study and another behavioral interview. And in the case study, they're just gonna ask you questions that kind of align towards the different, the area of consulting that you're applying for. And that's just to get a sense of how well you solve problems, the process that you use to solve your problems, etc. It's just getting kind of an insight into your brain and how you think. The interview process for me, I thought it was really tough. There was a total of three interviews. I was referred by Natalie, so that's what the first like application process was. She sent in my resume and they contacted me and asked me for a phone interview. So I talked to someone on the phone at first and then the second phone interview, they were asking me more questions about about what is consulting, um, what do you think you would be doing in this job. Third interview was a Skype case interview, like video interview. So they give you like a packet to study about case interviews because I had no idea what a case interview was. And so I like really was studying and just doing practice case interviews, asking Natalie and other friends that were in consulting. You basically open up like a video chat and they present you with a case, like a real business case. And uh, there's no right or wrong answer. You just kind of have to explain to them your thinking process and um, you know how you would deal with that problem with your clients and stuff. There's, there's really no right or wrong answer. They just wanna see your thinking process. For me, I, I've been with my firm essentially for five years now, if you're counting from when I first interned. So I didn't have this typical coming straight out of undergrad, let me do my, my case competition and all this kind of super day stuff. I did have kind of a smaller super day when I interned after my sophomore year of college and there I did it was maybe four hours and I talked to a partner manager director probably every single level at the firm 
and just kind of walk them through my resume. Nothing crazy, no case. I just wanted to see if you can hold a conversation and and to show that you were interested in the business. Um, when I in ended up switching to consulting later on, this was in 20, actually early this year, early 2019, I did have to do a case competition, but it wasn't, you know, a generic kind of management consulting case where, you know, how many people are walking through JFK at 6 p.m. on a Friday? It was, it was very technical and specific to what I'm doing. So it was, all right, here's a business. This is what they've done in the last couple of years. What's something that we should investigate? And we're trying to figure out the purchase price for the company. We didn't have any warning. It was, all right, here, email you the case like a minute before the interview starts. They black out their screen and you just go to work and they're on the other side so they can hear if you're talking to anybody or anything like that. And 20 minutes later, you unblock your screen off of your Skype or whatever you're doing or if you're in person and you talk through your thought process. What skills are needed to be a consultant? I think that you really just have to be a problem solver. That is the number one thing I would say. You have to be able to pick up on things quickly because you're constantly changing environments since you are always working on a different project and you have to be able to problem solve. At the end of the day, that's why they hire you is to solve another company's problems. Any big consulting company, their asset is their people. You know, like that's what they're selling. They're selling you. So you have to be a really good representation of the company, but also just a really good problem solver and be able to get the job done. Wow. Uh, time management. Time management is huge. I was really bad at it. I didn't realize I was really bad at it until I started. And thankfully I had some good managers and good mentors that were like able to help me work through that stuff. Time management is huge because there's always going to be more work to be done than time you have. So you're going to have to figure out how to prioritize what needs to come first how to make sure you're not spending too much time on a problem. If you're getting stuck, you gotta figure out how to work through that kind of stuff quickly. Time management is huge because otherwise you will fall behind and you will feel like you're always like scraping, scrapping to keep up with the pace of the work. I would say you need to be a good communicator because you will be working with clients. So you wanna make sure that you know you come off as personable and trustworthy because they are gonna be paying a lot of money for you to be there. So you wanna be personable. A lot of those gonna be hard skills, whether that is tech or business or marketing. But I really would not say that that is the number one thing. I, I, I think the most important things are just being proactive and having self-motivation. Uh, some I've really learned that you're not gonna be handed anything on a silver platter. You shouldn't wait around for people to tell you what to do. You really need to be proactive. Just be self-motivated to move forward. You know, become an asset to the company as quickly as possible. To be a consultant, I think the number one skill is to be able to communicate. And I don't necessarily mean that in the way that people might think, you know, you're presenting to a client with a PowerPoint and you have a little stick and you're walking them through, you know, this is all my recommendations and all that. No, more than even that, it's being able to communicate with your teammates, right? Because you're on teams of in ranging from three to you know, seven people, it depends on what you're doing for these projects. And a lot of times it's high pressure, high stakes scenarios that you're working in. And when, you know, crap's hitting the fan, three days before a deliverable has to go out a PowerPoint or a report or whatever you have to do, and you barely have time to get it done, you are stressing. You need to be able to, to communicate with your teammates under this pressure, you know, be able to acknowledge what's going on, try to find a solution. And it's not all about the work. If, if someone has a conflict, if someone's child is sick and they have to leave early, you have to adapt to these kind of things on the fly and being able to, again, like keep coming back to it, but handle the pressure that you were under, right? Um, that's that's probably the number one thing. And coming along with that is being able to communicate you know, with, with how you feel to your teammates, what you, what you believe you need to get done. If you have a recommendation and you're a lower staff rank than the person who's doing something you might feel is incorrect, you have to have the confidence to speak up and say that, right? And at the end of the day, it's, it's client service consulting. You are serving clients. They are paying you for your time. And if you're not able to articulate your solutions in a way that is logical and understandable, that in a way that they can understand, then you're not really maximizing the value that you can offer. It's one thing to be intelligent and smart, but if you can't get your point across in a way that's understandable, they're not going to want to come back and hire you again in the future. Did you travel? One of the assumptions of consulting is that you travel everywhere because some projects are in different states and different cities. And actually for me, I never traveled. I got staffed on a project that was local, but I do know a lot of people that do travel. Yes. I was traveling for my projects. I have been on a few different projects, but I was traveling Monday through Thursday. 
So Monday morning, we fly in to the client site, stay there in a hotel Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. And then Thursday evenings, we would fly back to Atlanta, which is where I live for the weekends. And then come Monday, go back, do the same thing. Yes, I actually do travel. I'm based in Tampa, Florida, and I got the opportunity to travel to Miami. So my current project is um, six months long. I'm hoping to get extended because I absolutely love the travel part. I'm from Tampa. I Every Monday morning, I fly to Miami. It's a 35 minute flight. And so you get there a little late on Mondays, and then I fly back to Tampa Thursday nights. I get to choose which hotel I want to stay at. It's obviously, they it's just under a budget. But they put you in hotels and I get uh, per diems, which is just like a kind of a stipend for you to use since you are traveling. It helps with food and Ubers and stuff like that. If you love traveling, I mean, this is such a good way to rack up airline points, hotel points. Um, I'm all about that, getting that status. In my specific line of service, I'm not required to travel that much. I would say maybe once or twice a month I'll travel and it's only for a day or two when I do. But I'd say most consultants, Monday through Thursday travel is expected. Friday, you'll get your, your flex day where you can return either back to your home office or fly to, to see your family, whatever you wanna do. But um, for me, not so much. What does the staffing process look like? So for me, I actually wasn't on a project for three months, which meant that I was on the bench. And when you're on the bench, you literally get to like work from home or go in the office if you want. But basically your job is to get staffed. So I would set up meetings with other like managing directors. I would email people. I would look at like the staffing website that we had and apply to a million projects. So it's kind of like you're reapplying for jobs. I would have a bunch of calls with people that were trying to staff at people. So it literally is like you're applying for jobs again except the only difference is you're getting paid while you're on the bench, which is pretty nice. You have someone called your resource manager who is in charge of making sure that you are staffed on projects and then also that they're, they keep track of how long you're supposed to be on the project, when you're rolling off, and making sure that you're making plans accordingly to remain staffed on projects so that as one project is winding down, you're already looking ahead and making sure that you're gonna be able to get staffed on another one pretty soon afterwards. The kicker with the resource manager is that even though she's in charge and making sure that you are staffed, after your first project, finding what project you get staffed on and that kind of stuff is on you. That's on you to just like leverage your personal network. So you meet a bunch of people, like you've got all these friends that you start with on your level. Then you've got other managers and people that you've worked with in the past. And you're kind of reaching out to all those different areas, trying to figure out, hey, what's available? Like, I'm really interested in this type of work. I really want to get into coding or I really want to get into, I don't know, wealth management and things like that. You got to work within your network and find out who's working on what. You ask them, hey, do you have any positions available on your projects? Like it's on you to do most of your own personal staffing. There is like a software on the portal where you're basically just applying to jobs. Um, you kind of send them your resume, post like what they're looking for and whatnot. And you send them your resume and you hear back, maybe you don't, you'll get an interview, maybe you don't get it. Um, you also have, I have a uh, talent fulfillment specialist. So she helps me look for projects and you have a career counselor and they'll also help you. So I did use the staffing tool, but what I heard, a lot of people are like, oh, I didn't even use that staffing tool. It's all about networking. You meet someone, you know, you talk yourself up, tell them what your skills are, find out what they're doing and say, you know, is there a place on your project? Is there anyone you can put me in contact with? Um, I've heard that's how a lot of people do it, but don't feel like that's the only way because there is an actual, you know, tool where you can do step-by-step you know, the normal process. I imagine every firm does staffing differently, but for me, um, at a big four accounting firm, not at, you know, McKinsey Bain or, um, or BCG, we have kind of either two ways you can get staffed. One is just putting your name down on your sector's kind of deployment list, as we call it, right? Because everyone in New York, especially, you're broken into industries. So I'm on private equity clients. So I'm on the private equity tracker. And I'll put my name on there if I'm available for a new deal, a new project. Bam, okay, associate, this much experience, this is what he's not done so far. And you're picked up probably in a few days for a project. Every now and again, it could be a week and a half, two weeks, and you're not picked up at all. And you're just kind of sitting there on the bench waiting for work to come your way. And that kind of sucks, but it gives you a good time to kind of recenter and get focused on your priorities in life. If you've been working a lot, you can kind of calm down, get your health together in these in-between periods. 
And the second way is just to reach out to HR and say that you're available and they'll kind of get you staffed. Did you use your degree? I feel like this is kind of a tricky question. I think industrial engineers are problem solvers in general, so most people in my graduating class actually did end up working at consulting companies. I wouldn't say I used like exactly what I learned in my classes, but it was more so that industrial engineering prepared me to be a critical thinker. I didn't use my degree on a daily basis at work. Every once in a while, a concept would come up or a program would come up that we need to use. And I got exposure to that through my courses, whether it had been like a project that I did or we took like an actual whole, 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 a whole, a whole course. We took a whole course or a program that I had to use for one of my old courses comes up and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm familiar with that or I've heard of it. So it's not necessarily applying those skills and stuff that I learned on a day-to-day -day basis more so than like, I've got some type of context when I'm hearing these things kind of going on in the meetings that we're having and stuff like that. Um, I do. I, I'm not, I don't use any particular programs that I used in college. Like I did AutoCAD and SolidWorks and graphic design stuff, Photoshop. I don't use those, but I mean, I definitely use my technical skills that I used in college. Yes, my degree is critical to my job. I would not be able to be competent in a room with C-suite executives, CEOs, CFOs, controllers, if I did not know my business acumen, just the acumen alone, like the back of my hand, because things are flying, these are high paced, high intensity conversations, and I'm you know, 24 years old in the room, and I'm expected to understand what's being said, and not just that, but offer solutions, right, so. Did you feel challenged in your role? Personally, I did not. I think that had to do with the stuff I was assigned on my project. I really didn't feel that challenge. I felt like it was very easy. I wasn't doing anything difficult. I think that just happened because I was very, very new and I was early and it was my first project, but I didn't really feel that challenged. Of course, there were some challenging days, but overall, the everyday day-to-day -day assignments, I didn't think were difficult, which is definitely a problem that I always state in my videos of like why I also left. It's like, I didn't feel fulfilled. I didn't feel challenged. <laughs> Um, challenged might be a little bit of an understatement, honestly. Uh, there were times that it felt a little bit overwhelming, but it was in a good way. Like, because of how much I was being pushed constantly and the hours that I was working and the time that I was being forced to commit to my projects, I ended up learning a lot more in that period of time than I thought that I ever would. So like, it was good and bad because at times I was like, yo, I wish this would just like chill out, like pump the brakes a little bit. But at the same time, uh, it consistently pushes you so that you're learning and growing at a lot faster rate than you would in probably a normal career. Um, I definitely feel challenged. Um, I can't speak for everyone, but I, um, I'm currently working with like Oracle Cloud and PeopleSoft and Microsoft uh, SQL. And so I've never had any experience with any of those before I came in. Um, and you know, they don't expect you to come in and be experts, but they expect you to come in, be willing to learn and work hard. Um, you know, they don't have time to sit down and train you all day, every day and teach you like you're in school. Um, it is a lot of teaching, but you need to do a lot of work on your own. Um, and I've kind of struggled with that because I feel like school was almost just kind of a breeze. Uh, I mean, you study, you know the material, you take a test, you get an A and that's it. But I feel like here, it's just, you have to do more. Overall, I would say my role is challenging and it's, it's, it's humbling in a lot of ways because I do feel very, you know, I feel like I've done very well in school and high school and, you know, SATs and all that, college, got into the, you know, the master's program I wanted to get into. But even now, there are people that I will see that have worked at this firm for 10 years and I, I truly am like, you are a genius. The way that, how fast they can, they can interpret what is being said and, and just come up with an answer, like, on the spot. It's, it's humbling. It's very, very humbling. It shows you just how much you have to learn. Is it a fulfilling career? Like I said, I wasn't that fulfilled, but please don't use me as like the poster child for fulfillment um, because other people might. And it, I think it just depends on your project, truthfully. It really does depend. The work that I was doing didn't make me necessarily, didn't necessarily feel like it was creating a huge impact on my life personally. But that's because I honestly want to build a career in 
music and something that's not exactly what I was working on. Like at my consulting firm, I was working on projects with an insurance company, projects with like a hospital and things like that. And it was cool because I felt like I was making an impact on the local areas and the customers that they were serving. And I definitely felt like I was a valued member of my team. Like my team would say all the time, like how they couldn't do this without me and stuff like that. So from that aspect, yes, I felt useful. But as for like a personal and professional career goals for myself, like I felt like I was getting useful skills, but not necessarily like this is what I want to do for the rest of my life for lack of a I do believe it's a fulfilling career for sure. You know, I'm I'm in an entry level job, um, so I don't quite feel like I have hold the highest value in the company of half a million people right now. But I do see the people who work above me in manager positions, I do feel like they are just obviously like super important and valuable and I do see myself, you know, reaching that level and becoming a huge asset. Uh, I think it is the feeling, especially when you're working with clients, like I, I like working around people and like with consulting, that's like what you do. You go in and you help the client and you kind of get to see what work you're doing. You get to talk with the client, see what they like. Um, so I, I like that. I think it's more fulfilling. I do feel like consulting in general is fulfilling in that at least you know you're doing something that is helping someone in a way. Hopefully you're not doing consulting to tell them how to do something shady or how to take advantage of their employees or give them less benefits or what have you. But overall, at least in what I do, I can rest easy knowing that my work is truth seeking and that yes, we are providing advice and we're, we're paid and we, we do want to obviously profit on our work. It's, it's fundamental, but we are seeking the truth in what I do, right? We are looking at a business objectively and telling them this is what your numbers show this is what we can project in the future, and this is how you should value your business. But at the end of the day, I, I can rest easy knowing that we are looking for the truth, and I don't really have to question my morals in any way. It is, it is fulfilling. What is the work-life balance? So for me, I was really lucky. I actually worked very, very normal hours, which is extremely uncommon for consulting. I worked nine to five. I got in at around 9.15 and I left the office at five. I had a one hour lunch break and I worked from home on Fridays. That is unheard of. It's very common that people work from home on Fridays, no matter what type of consulting you do, but the nine to five is very unheard of for a lot of people. Um, Work-life balance is just gonna depend on so much. It's gonna depend on your specific firm, it's gonna depend on your specific project and your role on that project. It really depends, it's gonna come down to your managers and your partners and what they expect from you. And this is where the communication skills come really in handy because there's always gonna be work to do. So if you allow yourself to get bogged down in that, you can work up to 60 plus hours a week. I get into work late on Mondays and I get to leave early Thursdays um, and I work from home or remote wherever on Fridays. You know, that sounds nice, but I do stay later in the office on Mondays and my Tuesdays and Wednesdays, you know, I'm, I'm probably in the office like 8.30 to 7. Ooh, oh, that sounds bad. I don't know. I almost choose to do that because, you know, there are some analysts in my position who will leave right at 5. And I think I was doing that in the beginning and then I started to, you know, get closer with my managers and realize that, you know, I should I, I should really be making an effort to be noticed, make them, you know, see that you are putting in the time and effort. Work-life balance definitely depends on your firm and the projects that you work on. Like I said, most consultants are gone Monday through Thursday and they come back on Friday. So that could sound like you know 80 percent of your life is work and you're only balancing on the weekends or on that one friday you're back home but you're, it just depends right and when you're young you want to put in the time when you have less distractions so when you're older in life you can be financially secure and have the time to do what you want to do so it's kind of the mindset we look at it as that yeah we'll work very very hard and do it kind of whatever it takes to get the project done in a satisfactory manner and again you're billing at absurd kind of relatively absurd rates for your time and you have to return that value 
what's your favorite part of the job okay so the favorite part of my job truthfully was the ability that i knew that i didn't have to be here forever if i didn't like a project i could roll off so even when i quit and i put in my notice they asked me do you want to switch projects like if it's a project thing we'll just move you to another project and i really love the opportunity to try out different things and i loved the ability that we had offices everywhere so if i ever wanted to transfer to the new york office one day which was actually my plan i could do that and that was possible so i think the amount that you learn because you're constantly switching and working for different companies the experiences that you get the fact that you can say that you worked at one of these like big consulting companies is, and it's looked at very very highly I think all of that is such an amazing thing and I really love the people like all of my bosses all of my coworkers were so cool and nice and I think consulting companies hire really great people because again like I said that's who they're selling so I know it's a cheesy way to say like oh I love the people but truthfully like the people that work at these companies I think are such like people people you know like they're very social they're very easy to talk to um and yet they it's like work hard play hard like they get their work done too I just met so many so many incredible people through this job i started with a group of about 25 other analysts which are like the entry-level people at my firm and they were from offices all over the southeast or kind of all over in general not even southeast i have friends that i've met through work that live in chicago denver la New York, DC, Charlotte, and Atlanta. And all those different people have made such a big impact on me in just the short year that I've been there. Um, they're all like-minded individuals that grow in their careers professionally and they wanna do good work, but they also, at the end of the day, they still wanna have fun. They value those types of, types of experiences that I do where it's just, just uh, bonding with people that have a common interest. Is it traveling 100%? I mean, I've all, like, ever since college, I've realized I, how much I love to travel. I love airports. I love eating in airports. I don't know why. I love hotels. Um, I love the busyness. I love um, racking up them points and getting status and getting treated like a queen at my hotels. Um, and I love seeing new places. I'm in Miami right now, and... You know, I originally, I wanted to get based in Miami, but they gave me Tampa. And now I have the best of both worlds because I get to come here and stay in fun hotels and live in Miami. And then I also get to go back to Tampa on the weekends. Probably who I get to interact with on a daily basis. I'm 24 years old, just graduated college. And every other day I'm on a phone call with the CFO of a Fortune 500 business. And he is expecting me to tell him how to improve or how to assess a certain situation. It's rewarding seeing uh, to be in that room to kind of see behind the curtain that you know 99.9% .9 of Americans don't see is how these CEOs actually think. And I'm very, very humbling and I'm privileged to do that and, um, and I'm learning just an incredible amount of stuff for the amount of time that I've been here. I can't imagine working anywhere else and learning more than I've learned um, at my role in the last four months. And least favorite part of the job. The least favorite part of the job for me actually is how big the company is. I think I work so much better in a small company. I don't like how in order to get anything done, it has to go through a million layers of people. I feel like you're so easily replaceable. Like if someone wants to just, if I quit, it's not that big of a deal or if I just feel like you're so easily replaceable. You're just a number to them. There's absolutely like no personal relationship between people that are higher than you unless you're like working directly with them. And I just, I don't like that. Like I wanna feel like I'm like contributing to something that I can see my action, like I can see my work be put in place. Whereas when you work for a huge company like that, it's just, you don't see it and it's not that possible. And it's something that I really, really like about working for myself is that I see everything that I'm doing and I see the result of that and I see how that's like moving me forward versus companies that are huge. It's like you have to talk, if you want to like make a transfer, if you wanna make a decision, if you wanna ask someone a question, it literally goes through a million layers and you just feel like you're kind of like one of hundreds of thousands of employees. It is with any consulting firm or any corporate job in general, there's gonna be politics, but especially at these bigger firms, like for example, Deloitte has 200,000 people, there's gonna be politics that you just really can't control and then you're gonna have to learn how to navigate so a lot of what you're doing is going to be metric driven because they're not going to be able to get to understand your personal story as much as they try to and they try and set up programs that help incentivize and create those types of dynamics you're just really not going to be able to they're not going to be able to get to know you as an individual no matter what they say you're not going to get recognized solely off of merit 
you're gonna have to form relationships with quote unquote the right people. And that's something that didn't really resonate with me. I'm someone that likes to uh, have very genuine relationships with the people that I interact with, even in a work setting. So the idea of me having to know the right people and talk to the right people if I wanna be deemed quote unquote successful by the firm, um, doesn't really sit right with me, but at the end of the day, I get it because logistically it's just impossible to get to know everyone's work to the level that they need to in order to make informed decisions that aren't just going to be relative. How important networking is. I, I love to be social and I love to meet people, but there's another part of me that is introverted and has a hard time, especially when I'm by myself. You know, if I have a friend with me, I'm going to go be more social. But when I'm by myself, it's really hard for me to just go up to someone and be like, Hi, I'm Anna. Where are you from? What's up? And I just realized I've had to do that, especially at events where I go and I'm looking around I'm like, Oh my gosh, I don't know anyone. I have to force myself to just go up and meet people. And you know what? It is never as bad as I think. Ever. Just the unpredictability of the consulting business and that you don't know necessarily when a project's going to start or when it's going to end sometimes or even if you have a deadline, those deadlines get you know blown past often. Um, so it would just, you just have to know that your life is a bit malleable in this industry and even if you think you know where you're at in a certain stage of the process that something could come up or you can get a call at a certain, you know, at 6 p.m. on a Tuesday saying, hey, by Friday, I need to get this report. I need to get this thing to send out to my banker. And again, you're in client service, so you're going to have to get that done. And now Tuesday through Friday, you could probably cancel most of your plans after 5 p.m. because you could be working very late. That was it for today's video. I hope that you guys liked it. I hope that you liked my friends answering questions. I want to thank them for answering these questions and thank the time because I know that it is something that is not fun to always just like sit and film, especially because they don't do YouTube or anything. It's not like they're super comfortable in front of the camera. So I just have the best friends ever and I thank you guys so much. You guys are the best. But if you guys want to check them out, I will have all of them down below. If you guys want to ask me any questions, you guys can leave them in the comments. And if you guys worked for consulting companies too, leave your experiences and your answers to these questions in the comments so that we can all have a discussion. I hope that this helped, and if you guys want me to do any other careers or anything like that, then let me know, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. So, what is consulting? Consulting is basically when a person or a company realizes that they've got... Nah, I'm fucking around, I'm fucking around. And... Action. All right, I'm gonna start over.